Am I the jerk for ruining my dad's birthday celebration? For context, I have autism, and the rest of my family does not. My parents are first-generation Americans around their late 40s. My sister and I are in high school. I have been diagnosed with autism for 14 years, so my parents know of my differences. I have extreme sensory issues, like sensitivity to taste, loud noises, certain sounds and textures. My family and I are at a resort to celebrate my dad's birthday. Tonight, we went to one of those restaurants where the chef cooks in front of you. It was very noisy there, but my mom taught me to act normal in front of others since I was young, so I made myself handle the noise to keep my dad happy. The issue started when the chef started to hand out food, but none of my safe foods were made by the chef, causing me to decline all the food. My dad was disappointed that I didn't try any food, and my mom was mad at me for not having the foods she thought I was okay with. She made me go back to the room to not dampen the mood further. I left to not upset my mom more. These things have happened before. My parents know of my differences but brush them off. In my opinion, this is because they see me as normal since I am bright. When I was young, my dad was gone on work trips, leaving my mom to raise my sister and me. This is why I do not blame my dad as much for brushing off my differences compared to my mom. He has not had much of a role in raising me, even when the work trips lessened. My mom always taught me to act normal since I was young, forcing me to make eye contact and refusing to get me any headphones for my noise sensitivity. She didn't tell me about my autism for most of my life because she didn't want me to use it as a crutch, despite me being in special needs and me being aware of it. I found out I had autism before I was told because she poorly hid it from me. She would still tell me I used to have autism. I still don't know if this was to hide it from me or because she denied my differences. I had breakdowns when I was younger because I didn't know why I was different, and my mom telling me I was normal didn't help. My mom thinks she did the right thing. Not long ago, my family and I went to a theme park like Bush Gardens. That night, I was more sensitive, but my mom didn't care. She told me, you're not going to ruin this for the rest of the family, while she left me crying during an anxiety attack to enjoy a ride with the others. She left me again, upset that I wasn't using my accommodations to allow the family to lie and skip for another ride, because I didn't want to join for the same reason, again leaving me crying from being overwhelmed. At this point I left the park because I couldn't take it anymore. I sat by the car, where my parents yelled at me for hiding once they found me, then grounded me for months. I have a therapist who thinks the actions of my parents were wrong, and mine aren't. I told my mom, who told me she doesn't give a shit. I don't know why she got me a therapist if she won't make any effort to change. You did the right thing. Your parents seem more concerned with appearances than your well-being. Whether you have autism or not, you did what you needed to do at dinner to help your father enjoy himself. It's not fair for them to expect you to make all the accommodations, while refusing to make reasonable ones for you. Human beings don't exist to be convenient, and it's wrong for your parents to treat you as if you should be. Would I be the asshole for discontinuing my biological parent visitations? So I am super conflicted here. I have a son, Nick, who is 3 years old and I am his guardian by default. There is no court order. His biological father, whom we will call SD, has signed the paperwork claiming him, and there is a support order in place but no custody agreement. I tried to file once, and the sheriff was unable to locate SD in the 60 days as he moves around a lot, so it was dropped. For the entire pregnancy and the majority of Nick's 3 years, I was the only parent. SD would come around maybe 4 times, but disappear within a week or two. Every time he would reappear, he would try to be a family, and when he was told I wasn't interested, he was gone again. SD has four other children, older than Nick, with whom he has no custody or visitation. He has paid a total of $36 in support in the last three years and doesn't contribute in any other way. A few months ago, he got a new girlfriend, now X, and decided he wanted to be a part of Nick's life. Despite the trauma surrounding Nick's conception, I decided to allow him the opportunity to be in his life. It has caused nothing but issues, and I no longer want to allow visitation. I am being encouraged, or rather pushed, by my family and husband to cut him off. Issues. His ex-girlfriend called CPS on me as soon as they broke up. I haven't heard from CPS. This is just what SD told me. He has no vehicle and I transport on my dime. He also has no job. He changes employers and living situations frequently. The house he is currently staying in has smelled like weed multiple times when I drop my son off. The other children living there are unattended. Every weekend when he returns Nick, SD states that Nick is or has been sick and he has medicated him. SD said it was some sort of flu a few of the times, but most recently said he went to the doctor with Nick and was diagnosed with scabies. He doesn't have Nick's medical information, so there was no official paperwork for him, but SD got a prescription for his scabies. I took Nick to the doctor the same day, and there were absolutely no signs of scabies, just a couple of dots of eczema on his upper arms. Every time I go to drop Nick off, he refuses to get in the car, cries, screams, and clings to me saying he doesn't want to go with daddy. He has told me twice now he is scared but doesn't articulate why, and I don't want to lead him with questions. I just want SD to get himself straightened out. I don't believe it's a good place for my son to be, and I am concerned. 
He won't be seeing him for the next two weeks due to his scabies diagnosis, but after that, would I be the asshole for discontinuing his visitations? I would rather we go to court, and he receives supervised visitations until he can start contributing in a positive way, instead of causing issues. You did nothing improper. It's important to listen to the son because he is clearly scared and uncomfortable. The behavior Nick is showing is very concerning, especially with the scabies and being medicated when he gets home. Do not send the kid back to his dad's house, it's not worth the risk. Protecting the child should be the top priority, and the dad needs to step up and prove he can provide a safe environment before any more visits. Am I the jerk for not wanting to continue staying with relatives? I am a 41-year-old female on an international vacation and currently staying with relatives. There are currently five people in the house, three adults, one of whom is over 90 years old and two children, both under five years old, who go to daycare. I am going to another city for a week and then returning. During my week away, their son brother and his family of three, all over 18 years old, will be returning from their international vacation to the same house. Upon my return, they planned for me to continue staying with them. Initially, I agreed because it was only going to be the son brother returning, but now it's his entire family, which means one of the older children will not be able to use their bedroom since I will be in it. This also means there will be 10 people in the house, with only two available bathrooms. There are another two bathrooms, but they are in suite to the five bedrooms. I am also quite introverted, so it has been very stressful and draining to stay with my relatives. During my current stay, I have found black mold in the laundry machine, on the chopping board, and on the dish sponge. I have mentioned it to them. I have tried to clean around the house, but they do not have many cleaning supplies. They continue to leave the wet sponge in the sink. They have a weekly cleaning service who comes in, but it is only surface cleaning at best. The house has not been taken care of very well. One bathroom does not have a working light, so I use the currently empty bedroom and suite bathroom at night. The other bathroom usually smells of either urine, the sewer, or mold. Some of them have been coughing for more than a week. I have found a swarm of ants in my bedroom. Although the home-cooked meals are delicious, their food handling practices would not pass food safety inspections. I am already experiencing more gastrointestinal issues than when I am at home, but I have managed to go out to sightsee. Now I am currently stuck in the house because I am experiencing flu-like symptoms. They have been very good to me for the past one and a half weeks and have taken me out on a few long driving trips, as well as refusing to let me pay for food. With the rise of COVID, I do not want to contract it again as I am already experiencing long-term symptoms and may never recover. My cousin and his family are returning from a country that has a history of issues with airborne illnesses. Getting everyone to constantly mask seems unreasonable since there are small children. Just the thought of constantly being around more people whom I have never met gives me anxiety. Am I the asshole for wanting to stay elsewhere when I return from my side trip, so I will lessen my chances of getting sick again as well as having peace and quiet? I have another three weeks of vacation left and will be traveling to another country after I leave the current country I am in. Your concerns are understandable and complicated by politeness. Is it possible to change the itinerary a little so the hosting situation is no longer automatic? Maybe frame staying somewhere else as not wanting to put the niece or nephew out of their bedroom. Thank everyone for their kindness and generosity, but express that imposing further isn't the intention. Am I the jerk for not remembering my trip to Thailand? I am 37 years old, and up until last year, I had never left my home state of Victoria, Australia. I grew up very poor, and it was only in my early 30s that I started making okay money. Until then, I had never been on a holiday or a vacation, the concept was foreign to me. I have a lot of hobbies, including playing guitar, archery, war games, laser tag and cooking. My wife Lucy of three years is not an avid traveler, but she has been to Thailand, New Zealand and Colorado. She proposed that we go to Thailand for a two-week vacation. If I go somewhere out of my regular zone, it needs to be for something very specific. Just going to a place and wandering does nothing for me. There has to be a goal in mind. When she proposed the trip, I got nervous. I knew that just going to a place for the sake of going there would be boring for me. Her itinerary was mostly about going to different cities and seeing the sights. At the time, I trusted that she would find something for me as she is much better traveled than I am and knows me well. In hindsight, I should have suggested a food tour. So we went, visited a few cities and towns, and I ate as much as I could from various street vendors. Then we went back home. The problem is, I remember very little about it. I did not really enjoy it. It was just a louder version of Victoria with more Thai people. I did not complain. I put on my best face and got through it because it was important to her. The problem arose when we went out to dinner with friends. One asked me what my favorite parts of the trip were. I just said the food and my wife asked me what my favorite city was. I froze. I could not remember any of the names and said Pattaya because my coworker goes there. However, we did not go to Pattaya. My friend mentioned another city and I agreed that the food was good there, but apparently we did not go there either. I said since it was last year, I had a bit of trouble remembering the trip. This upset my wife. On the way back home she expressed her frustration and said I did not appreciate how much effort she put into the trip. 
She asked why I could not remember something this important. I do not think I am the asshole. It is not my fault that the memory has just faded. It sucks knowing that I cannot connect with people about travel either, since apparently it does not register with me. Am I the asshole? You are the jerk here, OP, for being so unappreciative and blasé about a trip that was clearly important to your wife. Being in a vastly different environment for the first time should have been exciting, yet you acted childish and rude. The goal was to spend time with your wife and experience new things together, not just to coast through it. Honestly, you sound pretty boring if you can't appreciate such an incredible opportunity. Am I the jerk for not giving my friend her birthday present? Long story short, my former co-worker invited me to her birthday party dinner. Although she and I were not close, I thought it was nice of her to invite me. I took it as a sign that she wanted to get to know me more. She had the restaurant picked out, an Amazon wish list, and even a theme to dress up to. I bought a few gifts off the list and had them shipped to my house so I could wrap them and personally give them to her. I also bought a few costume pieces to match her theme. I was genuinely looking forward to her party. The day before the party, she changed the venue of the party. It was now a dinner party at an Italian restaurant. Okay, no problem, my boyfriend and I would be there. On the day of the party I was on my way to pick up my boyfriend, and she messaged me saying she had to push back the time an hour. Again, no problem, we would be there. So now, running early, I picked up my boyfriend and started driving to the other side of town. She messaged me again, this time saying she was cancelling the dinner party because she was in pain from getting a large tattoo done. I was annoyed but understood. Whatever stuff happens. We ended up making other plans. Fast forward two days, she messaged me asking about her gift. She asked me if I had gotten her anything off her wish list and when she should expect it. I was thrown off. I understand that it was her birthday but, one, we were not close for her to still expect a gift. She did not reschedule her party so I could give her a gift. 3. I see. Everything seemed fishy now. It felt like she just wanted me to get her a gift and that the party never existed, or she did not expect or want me to come just to get her a gift. Either way, at this point I told her no, I did not get her anything. She replied that she could clearly see I had purchased something on Amazon. Sure, but obviously as I am stating now, I did not, at this point I started my return. She then blocked me on Facebook. Am I the asshole? Did I do something wrong? We had only had a handful of conversations at work. Is there something I am missing? You have done nothing wrong. It's insane for her to ask where her present is, especially considering you're not even close. It's possible she never actually wanted you to come and hope to get free stuff out of you. What's more likely is that she's just a flake. Wibtom my parent wants to spend time alone with his, her grandchild, even though we're in a disagreement right now. My mother disapproves of a choice that my husband and I are making of occasionally drinking alcohol because my husband used to use drugs. She has been bringing it up to me in almost every conversation we have had in the last month. She has been nagging me, will not talk to my husband about it, and does not listen to what I have to say about it. She has done this in the past, and I have always given in to her because it is easier than putting up with constantly revisiting the same issues again and again. For example, I changed my wedding plans to make her happy. I changed the food, the guests, and my dress. We had a large family gathering coming up, and she demanded without telling us that there be no alcohol there. She ended up getting in a fight with her brother and sister over it. She then called me and wanted me to be on her side of the argument. I was not on her side of the argument and felt that it was inappropriate and that she crossed the line. It created a bunch of family drama and made going to see my out-of-state family awkward and weird. She ended up not coming. When I confronted her on her behavior, both the nagging and trying to go behind our backs and make choices for us, she played the victim and said that she did not know that she had been such a terrible mother. She said everyone was against her and that she only did it because she loves me and does not want to see me get hurt. After the event, I went to see her and tried to talk this out. I set boundaries on how many times she can talk to me about the same thing over and over again because it is destructive to a healthy relationship with me. She apologized for her actions and said that she was upset with herself about them. She also stated that it is her right to not agree with our choices, and I agreed. Today she stopped by to drop off a dog collar that I had left at her house. I asked her if we were still going out on Saturday for her birthday, and she told me that she made other plans. So she obviously does not want to spend time around me and my husband right now. However, she called and asked to pick up my 7-year-old son and take him to play at her house for a few hours later this week. I was so caught off guard that I said yes, but now I am second-guessing that decision. I want to resign that yes because I am feeling uncomfortable. It would be fine for her to invite us both over or to come to our house. Would I be an asshole for adding terms? Yebiambitia.i as long as this dispute is ongoing, protect your son from being used to push her agenda. Your child is yours to protect, and your mother sounds emotionally immature. Look up Lindsay Gibson's books about adult children of emotionally immature parents to help you establish better boundaries and protect yourself. Thanks for watching. When you subscribe, make sure to hit the bell to turn on notifications so you never miss a video. To finish listening to all the stories, check out the playlist in the description.